Hello and welcome to Doha Tan, a weekly podcast from Frontier Myanmar. I'm Oliver Slow. In the past three years, the Arakan army has been involved in fighting with the Tatmadaw around the area of Paletwa in southern Chin State, with this latest round of violence starting in September. This week, in partnership with the Chin world, Doha Tan hears about the struggles faced by the thousands who have been displaced by the conflict, men who have fled over the border into India. Here's the full story. Fighting between the Arakan army and the Tatmadaw in recent months has mostly been around Paletwa in Chin State, but recently spilled over into Bulitang, northern Rakhine State. Those displaced are running short of food and funds, causing many to flee over the border into India, said Ucho Ong, who provides help for people displaced by conflict. <laughs> They have found work in the villages where their relatives or friends live, but are struggling to survive on the wages. Villagers have fled to India and other places because of the troubles faced by the fighting. Almost 2,000 people have fled over the border into India's Mizoram state since 2017 as a result of the fighting, according to media reports there. The report said that the Indian provincial government is providing refugees with rice and clothing. The Arakan Army was established in 2008 and originally fought alongside the Kachin Independence Army in Kachin State. However, in 2015, the group began engaging in fighting in Chin State and over the border in northern Rakhine. The latest round of violence started earlier this year when conflict broke out between the Arakan Army and the Tatmadaw in Paletwa, with clashes continuing to September. In October, the Tatmadaw began clearance operations to try and expel AA from the area, according to a brief by the Myanmar Institute for Peace and Security. According to MIPS, the AA has transported hundreds of trained fighters into the region, as well as weapons and ammunition, and has established 45 positions in Paletwa and Buridao, both of which are mountainous and remote. MIPS said there were four recorded clashes in Paletwa and two in Buridao in November, but added that the number of clashes on the ground is likely higher. Amid the fighting, representatives from the AA, as well as from the Ta'ang National Liberation Army and the Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army, have met with government officials in recent months regarding a potential ceasefire, with talks ongoing. There is frustration among those displaced by the conflict. The government is doing little to help. They also accuse the government of limiting the activities of civil society groups who are active in the area. One person displaced by the fighting, who asked not to be named, said the IDPs needed clothing and food, as well as blankets to keep them warm during the cold winter months. Uso Myatan, secretary of the Chin Progressive Party, accused the government of ignoring the struggles faced by IDPs in the state. <laughs> We feel the government doesn't recognize the difficulties of refugees. If they did, they would provide assistance such as accommodation and food. If the government took it seriously, it would provide places for IDPs as well as food. In the long run, job opportunities should be created too. Uso Tet, state municipal minister and spokesperson for the Chin state government, defended its role saying it was doing everything it could to provide assistance for those displaced by the conflict. We support refugees according to the list presented by the township. The general administration department takes measures and helps the villagers. The Chin State government and Ministry of Border Affairs are regularly supporting. He said that the continued fighting mean that many of the IDPs cannot yet return to their homes. Chu Ong, who provides IDPs with assistance, said that the government had only helped in the early stages of the recent fighting. Meanwhile, some residents in Paletwa said they'd been threatened and forced to work as porters by both the Arakan army and the Tatmadaw. Spokespersons for both armed groups could not be reached for comment. 
The Chin State government estimates that about 1,300 people have been displaced by the fighting in recent years. But local civil society group, the Chin Human Rights Organization, puts the number at more than 6,000, with many fleeing to remote villages in Chin State. One of those is U Huai Tan, a father of six, who is currently seeking treatment in Sitway Hospital, having suffered injuries to his face, left hand and right leg. Huai Tan stepped on a landmine while searching for food in the local area, according to sources. As the AA continues to try and grow its presence in the region, and as the Tatmadaw tries to drive them out, it is likely that the struggles faced by the IDPs will continue for some time yet. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Dewa Tan. This program was put together this week by Salai Hung Tunji, Zani and Oliver Slow. Please stay tuned for more episodes in the new year and visit the Dewa Tan Facebook page. The project to support human rights reporting is a partnership between Frontier Myanmar and Fondation Hirondelle, funded by the Embassy of the Netherlands in Myanmar. Thank you for listening.